Hello there. Welcome to Curdbox. And we're doing things a little bit differently today. Mm, a little bit because of uh, holidays and vacations and a little bit because of the theme of our box. So let me back up a second and start. Hello and welcome to Curd Box, the podcast for people who like to eat cheese. I am your host, Jen Mason, and not with me today is my guest host, Julie Faye Van Balzer. She is off um, doing the summer thing, and uh, I am sadly doing the summer thing, and sadly, I should put in quotes, from Europe. I uh, am currently living in Sicily which is the little island off the toe of the boot. And uh, you've seen me um, do my podcasts from here for the last few months with Julie. And I thought it was perfect. You're, my camera is even moving a little bit because of the wind. I've got a beautiful location. You're going to hear horns and beeps and dogs and construction because we are in the heart of Syracuse in Sicily. Because our theme this month is European vacation. So... I thought for those of you who are watching the podcast instead of just listening to it, although those who are just listening, you're going to hear the sounds of Europe. I would take you away, just take you away to Sicily. So we've got, sorry, wrong arm. Uh, this is uh, the ocean here behind me. I'm up on the top floor of, uh, of the home we're staying in, in Ortigia, which is a little island off of the island of Sicily. And I'm going to tell you about our European vacation themed box this month. For those of you who are just somehow fallen into this podcast, probably because you like cheese or because you have a friend who recommended it, um, Curd Box is a cheese and pairing subscription box, but it's unlike anything else out there on the market. Every month, we curate a story for you in cheese and pairing. So you'll get three cheeses and three pairings. They all revolve around this theme. We put together this podcast, a Spotify, Spotify playlist, and it's like dinner for two or snacks for six to eight. We got people who use it for their special dinner night once a month. Anyways, it's an experience in a box that happens to taste like cheese and other good things. So if you want to follow along with us um, next month and eat along with us, you can go to curdbox.com and sign up and start getting your delicious curd box. Uh, we ship all over the uh, contiguous U.S. Um, and, uh, and we love sending out stories in cheese. So the theme this month is European vacation. And so we've done our best, put on our best thinking caps and came up with a selection that comes from all over Europe. Um, we're going to start today with our Brew XL. Um, and because I'm in Sicily, I don't have the cheeses with me. These are all things we vetted as a team. So I've tried them and I love them. Um, and this is uh, falls into our friendly, flexible category, which means it's uh, it's a cheese most people will love. So it's a, it's a no-brainer. Um, and this comes from Belgium. It's a 14-month um, uh, Gouda. It is a Gouda or Gouda. Um, and, uh, and it's aged there in the Netherlands. Sometimes, uh, um, companies will import into the U S uh, Gouda, Gouda and, um, and age it there, but this is aged in Netherlands. This is going to give you that, I'm going to say it almost sparkles with, um, with the little crystals that, that are inside. The crystals are, uh, tyrosine crystals. They give you a little crunch, but it, it, they're, it's not salt, but it gives you that salty little burst and they're delicious. We have so many people who love uh, a more aged Gouda in our store. If you don't know, we also own a store called curdsandco.com in the Boston area. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this one is just lovely. You're going to get kind of, um, butterscotchy caramel sweetness like on the side it's just because this cheese as it's aged um the delicious flavors in it have gotten more intense and the more intense they get the more butterscotchy or nutty they might become when you try it next to a younger version of the same cheese um this is crafted in small batches and uh you know it's just it's hard to find a bad Gouda. I mean, I have to say my job is one of the best jobs ever because I get to put together stories for you and, and it's not just adding pictures or not just, a, I get to give you cheese and just to pair with it. So 
It's a great job, but it's not hard when I'm having to pick a, a delicious Gouda. Um, wow, that wind is kicking up, so sorry if your screen is wobbling a little bit. Um, okay. So, um, so that was a Gouda from Belgium, and, you know, not to be outdone, and in Belgium, but aged in the Netherlands. Um, now, this next one is made by Beamster. This is their classic. Um, classic Beamster, it's their sort of quintessential, standard, classic recipe, you can't go wrong with it, Gouda. This one's a little older. This is aged 18 months. Um, and uh, this is sort of the traditional flavors of Holland. So you're going to get a slightly different flavor from the first one. It's a little bit younger. It's not young. That Brew XL is not young but it's a little bit younger um, and it's a good opportunity to taste the same type of cheese. Both of them are Goudas or Haudas, but made two different ways, um, two different in two different places. So two different milk types, two for milk from, from cows eating things in two different places. Um, and it's, it's a really good way to like, um, if you like a Gouda to like see how different it can be. Um, and this is going to give you maybe more like toasted walnuts, we think. So the other one, got a little nuttiness, but more in a like butterscotch nuttiness. I mean, you really have to eat the cheese to know what I'm talking about um, and kind of close your eyes and just let it come to you. Um, but uh, both of them are going to give you, um, oh, so our memory, uh, the part of our brain that handles memories also handles smells. And so that's a lot of times why when you smell like something cooking that smells like your grandmother baked it, you get this like happiness feeling inside. It's not, it's science. It's not like hoo-ha, um, but you're going to get some of that happy feeling when you're eating these, if these remind you of birthday parties because, uh, you know, butterscotch ice cream sundaes or summer camp or whatever. If you're feeling a little happy eating these, it's just your brain doing its job. Um, Okay, so, so we've been to Belgium, and we've been to the Netherlands, and now we're going to head to um, Salzburg, Austria, um, where the hills are alive, uh, and we're going to have Moosbacher, um, and this one is made by uh, Schardinger. Uh, I forgot to tell you that Beamster is made by Beamster, <laughs> and, um, and uh, this one is 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 lovely because it's it's or i say it's lovely because it's a cheese that's good and we picked it out for you but this is lovely for this sort of um discussion because this is a much younger cheese so eight weeks aged only eight weeks it's super young um this these are all let me double check my notes okay so the first one is a, a vegetarian rennet and the other two are a traditional rennet um and uh, all three are cow. We got cows. So we don't need to compare sheep's milk to cow's milk. We're kind of comparing ages. Um, but um, this Moosbacher is really uh, sort of a one of a kind kind of cheese. It's got a washed rind, which means after they make the cheese, they take, you would think they wash it like gentle with a, like a cloth, but no, they take like a scrubber. So like the kind you would like really scrub your nails with after working in the garden, but bigger. And they will put it in like a brine, uh, just in general wash rinds. They could put it in a brine that's a, like a salt water brine. They could put it in a wine brine or a beer or cider or um, even um, things will be washed in, uh, in alcohol, um, depending on what the cheesemaker wants to discover. But this one is washed in a brine. Um, and it's kind of, it's got those big Swiss holes um, that, that are really sort of gases escaping from the cheese as it's as it's working and growing. It's a living thing. Cheese is fantastic. Um, it has a nutty texture too, even though it's only eight months old, but it's, it's more, it's subtle. It's more subtle. And you'll, you'll, if you tasted it next to something that didn't have any nuttiness to it, you would be more likely to taste the nuttiness. Tasted next to these other two, um, the nuttiness could be, um, lighter um but it's going to give you kind of a smooth and velvety texture unlike the other two 
really because it's young. So it hasn't aged. Um, and when something ages, you know, it, it evap water evaporates and, and it gets it gets harder and um, more crumbly. So this one's going to have a different mouthfeel than the other cheeses. Plus, it's not a Gouda recipe. So, um, so those are our cheeses. We've been visiting sort of Belgium, Netherlands, and Austria region. So we thought, what flavors do we bring in to round out Europe? And and I want to take a break here for a second about, you know, this is a European vacation. And we try to tell you a little bit about why every month we pick this theme. Obviously, it's summer. We want to do a vacation-y theme. Um, we also are always conscious about what types of cheeses we are shipping in the summer. Um, and these are all cheeses that do very well. Um, we ship with, uh, with ice. In some regions, we ship with a little dry ice in there. You won't see it when it gets to you because the dry ice does its job. Um, and it sort of bounces off all of the heat coming in. But these cheeses will hold up even at room temperature. So they're um, much less fragile, you know, cheeses. We like to ship those all in the winter cold months around the U.S. Um, but but what, what are we trying to teach you this month? What are we secretly trying to get into you this month? And that's that even when you can't travel, um, you know, finances. I know I've got a ton of friends who are saving up for their kids to go to college, a European trip, maybe even just like a trip two states away. It's just like not in the picture. It's a staycation or, or you got really young kids. It's just not the time to do that. You're just slip and sliding in the backyard and running through the sprinklers, or maybe you're working hard through the summer, don't have kids yet, whatever it is. You could travel with food and um, I would encourage you, well, one, I encourage you to get curd box. I'm not going to miss the opportunity to plug us again, but I encourage you to say like, you know, even it, it, you just have a significant other, tell your significant other, let's make date night in this week and let's visit France. Like go find a, you know, find a, a good French movie you haven't seen yet. Uh, go to the store and get a couple French cheeses, get a loaf of French bread, get a French wine, you know. Do a little, just, you know, put some French music on if you're going to fix dinner too and not just have Jesus for dinner. Like, escape. Escape in your own house. So today we're taking you on like this magical tour of six different countries. But, you know, what we'd like you to take away from this is that you can visit other places of the world in your own home. You live on the East Coast, visit California. Get some California cheeses. You can get them in the in the on the East Coast. It's not a problem get a California wine. You can visit Australia very easily, especially in the wine selection, some fabulous uh, Australian Chardonnays. You know, pick a, pick a location. Let your kids pick a location if you have kids. Let them like give you a little report. You need them to do a little summer school <laughs> activity. Keep them out of your hair. Let them be, you know, the waiters for the night or, or, or you know, the cruise director for the night. Just some ideas, but I've kept you from eating long enough. For those of you eating along, let's talk about our um, our pairings. So I'm kind of excited by the fact that this is, I think, the first time we've ever included bread in our box. Now, we're really picky when we include a cracker or include a bread, what we call a surface. I'm air quoting so many times. For those of you who are only listening, um you're lucking out because you're not getting to see all my annoying little finger quotes. Um, but uh, we like there to be a reason for the surface to be in a box. It could be that we have like a, a spreadable cheese. So it needs to be there because, you know, nobody wants to just like pick up squishy cheese with their fingers. Um, but otherwise, it should have something going on with the flavor profile that matches the story. And, um, and so we, we went to Germany and uh, we were trying to find like, what do we, what do we bring from Germany? Now, granted, we started for this. We're like, do we bring a cheese from Germany? Is it? So Germany got to hold the place of one of our pairings. And I'd had this recently and I thought, you know, this is a really interesting thing to show people. This pumpernickel bread and it's like thin sliced and it's not kind of traditional for most of us in the U.S. Some of us in the U.S. have a background, uh, a heritage background, um, and, and 
this may be something uh, you're used to. There are some local bakeries and areas that will have um, more German um, ancestry, people with German ancestry there because they request it, it, it exists, right? So um, this pumpernickel bread is delicious just as is. You can cut it into quarters. You could toast it up a little bit. But if you have any left or if you choose to do this, it makes fantastic grilled uh cheeses and you can sort of like make the grilled cheeses like you normally do um cheese on the inside i like to shred the cheeses um you could shred a mixture of the three cheeses it'll give you a really sort of um complex flavor butter up the outsides of the breads and just grill it but then you can cut them into like little triangles and you could serve them on the cheese board with the rest of the cheese so you could just save a little aside and make them but also it's just a good hearty a surface. It's like a different texture, something we've never been able to put in here. I don't say never been able to. It was more because of the theme or whatever, but I felt we could sneak this one in there. Um, this is uh, made by uh, Mestemacher, um, is the company. It was named after Wilhelm Mestemacher, um, who was a master shoemaker. So this bread company. Um, he founded the bakery in 1871. So that's a hundred years before I was even born. Uh, I just told you how old I am. You may do the math. Um, and uh, this, the demand for this type of bread really grew. Um, and they would, uh, they, they did, they figured out a way to make it last longer. So it's a good hearty bread. Um, they would transport it. I think I'm checking my notes. Yeah. In, in tins that would let it ship and stay longer. And so thinking back to 1871, um, you know, you couldn't put it in a Ziploc bag. Um, and uh, anyways, these are, the loaves are placed um, in lidded pans and they're baked slowly um, at a really low temperature. It's why, and, and the ovens are like steam filled too. So it's why this is like, hearty bread but it's not like a brick but it's dense it gives you that uh reminds me a little bit of what they call rye bread in iceland not that we took you to iceland for this trip but they make a, a rye bread that really tastes more like a gingerbread to me um i think they use a rye flour um, but it gives you that sort of moistness of like a quick bread too um and uh anyway uh this has uh this has been kind of a staple there for a long time, obviously, 1871 to 1971. It's like 150-some years old. Um, and, uh, yeah, so a fun addition to uh, our, our current box. Um, and then we wanted to bring something in from England. Uh, and we brought an interesting thing in from England. This kind of gave us a two-for-one uh in that we are bringing you olives so like olives and loves i love olives um so they're greek olives so we got to sneak in the greek but these are um uh hailing from england and um and these have a beautiful uh marinade uh of lemon and rosemary this was um this company was founded uh by matt hunt and his wife haley uh in 2007 they were kind of looking for a sort of a new natural healthy snack i love a new healthy natural snack that also tastes like i want to eat it all the time um these olives that they use are uh helkidiki olives um and they're grown in northern greece um and uh you know it's just the that lemon and rosemary and the little touch of garlic is going to pair nicely with our cheeses. Um, and, you know, it's like the pumpernickel. It's not a sweet bread, but it has a sweetness to it. It's like a, it's, you know, 90% savory and maybe 10%. This is, there's a sweetness to it. And these olives have a little bit of that with the, the, the lemon in there, um, sort of rounding out and the rosemary a little bit there's there's something about that um and then mixed with their cheeses that go from sort of a, a swiss like tangy texture with the moussebacher up to the goudas 
So we've got this really cool, refreshing mix of just a little bit sweet. I mean, let's be honest, the cheese is savory, but there's a sweetness to it. So there's kind of this little like play around um, with that. And uh, and that's not going to stop with our last pairing um, because our last pairing is a honey and balsamic Dijon. It has honey in the name, but let's, it's a mustard. It's not candy. We didn't say like mustard candy. That would be very odd. But honey, uh, balsamic Dijon, again, balsamic vinegar also tends to me to be like 90% savory, 10%. Oh, that sweetness, especially if it's been reduced, obviously. Oh, I hope you can hear the trucks going by. I hope you're picking up some of the residual noise here, um, not just wind blowing into my microphone. Um, so this is made uh, by um, Edmund Fallow um, uh, Company. Uh, we've brought France. I mean, you can't have a European vacation without uh, France. And um, we've had them in our box before. They make so many different flavors and we absolutely love them. And, uh, and we want to introduce people to them because, you know, the mustard section is really big and we tend to just reach for French's or Grey Poupon, which are lovely. have been around forever, but, you know, want you to think differently um, if you have a recipe that normally takes um, a mustard in it as an ingredient, you know, think about adding something like this. Would this go? Would this make it any different? I, I love this um, as a as a different addition to like potato salad because you probably will have a little bit of this mustard left over after you have your plate. You can put this mustard on those grilled cheese sandwiches, those little tiny like cool grilled cheese. Oh, I made the finger quotes again. Those little tiny grilled cheese sandwiches um, that you can make with the pumpernickel. It's, it's just fantastic. Uh, it's like packed with a lot of flavor. It's like a secret ingredient nobody needs to know about. We can just keep it secret between you, me, and the you know hundreds of people that watch uh, and listen to this podcast. I promise. I cross my heart and hope to eat cheese. Um, let's see. What else can I tell you about Edmund Fallot? Fallot, Fallot, Fallot. I, mm, French is not the language I'm studying. Um, uh, so this is a... Uh, uh, traditional old style French mustard and it's made with whole mustard seeds. Um, and uh, um, what else can I tell you about them? They've, this has been a family owned business since 1928. So we're going on a hundred years. They're like five years away from a hundred year anniversary. Um, also you can go to their um, factory location and take a tour. If you do happen to be in Europe, uh, I highly recommend tours that are beyond just like the kids, Big Ben Parliament. Um, why do I say that? I say that because my mom, hi mom, um, who, uh, who, you know, raised six kids um, on a budget um, and we toured, I got to tour Jiffy, you know, the people who make cornbread mixes. I got to tour them. I got to tour Ohio art when I was a little kid. We just traveled around Ohio and, and she used the little AAA books and, uh, and any place that gave a factory tour we went to, it felt very much like I was an insider to in Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Cause he always showed like factory films to anyway, if you got kids. Or, or I'm invited on your trip because I still like doing those things. I, I love seeing insider stuff. They offer, they have a nice setup, which I'm always impressed and you can see it easily um, on their website. So what we usually do now is Julie, um, since I've been in Sicily, Julie eats through these things and tells us which things she likes. I've kind of been doing that all along, all through this thing, talking to you about... Um, about uh, making the grilled cheeses. Also, you have olives. If you felt fancy, you could cut up some little pieces of one of your cheeses. I'd suggest probably the moosebacher, and you can cut little long thin sticks, and you can stuff your olives if you want, um, and you could put those on little um, toothpicks, make your plate fancy. Um, you know, this, this mustard, definitely, if you wanted to, if you're not somebody who enjoys the curd box all at once, um, you are a nibbler. We definitely have nibblers. We've had people write into us. You know, I like to make my husband and I our little, um, our little lunch plates. 
Uh, and I will take, I have a couple small size wood boards, but you can do it on a small lunch plate and just take a little bit of the uh, mustard um, and dollop it on the plate and then smoosh it, make a little swoosh in the mustard on the plate. Makes it fancy. It takes not even, I'm going to say two seconds. It takes uh, two tenths of a second. It's, but it's like, I don't know, sometimes when you're having a rough day at work and you get to stop for lunch, you know, the little swish of mustard makes me happy. I could be all alone in this, but you feel free to write into us at uh, uh, crew at curdbox.com and let our team know if you, uh, if you dig, <laughs> if you dig a cute little fancy plate of cheese, if that makes your, your day go better in the afternoon. <laughs> um, but, you know, think about how you can to you can mix and match these. I think toasting up some of the pumpernickel, too, just to be sort of like crostini, um, maybe in fingers, little pumpernickel fingers would be fun, too, on the plate. Um, but mix and match. Try making a couple little grilled cheeses to mix before, if you're going to share it with your family, before everybody digs in. Um, you know, experiment. Think about where else, like we talked before, that you could visit through food and drink and movie um, or book. Um, think about what you could do for your next book club if you aren't already, you know, thinking if you do a book club and it, and it belongs to a certain place, a certain town, a certain country, um, you know, think about giving the full sensory experience um, with food um, and you know, cheese especially. Mostly, I hope that you will join us next month. And if you don't already get Curdbox, go to curdbox.com and you can subscribe um, three months, six months, a year. It's a, or just uh, every month renewing. Um, and uh, we would love to have you. Um, you can also just listen in. You can check out our website at curdbox.com and look at some of our past boxes and how we've curated them. Before you go to the grocery store, or you go to your cheese store um print one up and ask if you have a local cheesemonger to help you if those cheeses aren't available to find something similar a fantastic cheesemonger will love 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 the challenge so go make your cheesemonger happy and let them help you discover new things um that's what we're all here for let me tell you um even though julie's not here you can follow her usually <laughs> at what julie ate um and for our um our inclusions today. Um, let's see, you can find more about Beamster and all of the goudas, how does they make at Beamster Cheese. Um, our Schumacher, or I'm sorry, Moose Bacher is made by Schardinger. I put those two words together. That was funny. And that's at Schardinger.at. S-C-H-A-E-R-D-I-N-G-E-R. Dot at to learn more about Moosebacher and their cheeses. Um, let's see. You can go to this is a long one. Mestemacher underscore the lifestyle bakery. I'm going to spell Mestemacher. M e s t e m a c h e r underscore the lifestyle bakery to learn more about pumpernickel and the other um, similar types of bakery products that they do. Very interesting. Um, especially if you love this. I think there are going to be a few of you out there who are like, oh my gosh, this so reminds me of, and it's going to remind you of someone, a time, a place, a trip. Um, it's, it's just got that essence about it. Um, olives underscore, sorry, Olives underscore olives is where you can find our Olives. Um, and you can find uh, more about Edmund Fellow at um, Mutardes, M-U-T-A-R-D-E-S, uh, Fallow, F-A-L-L-O-T. And you can find more about us at curdbox.com or follow us pretty much on all the social media at curdbox. I'm Jen Mason signing out from Sicily. Um, thanks for coming with me along this European vacation and for listening to the sights and sounds this month. It was a joy to have you. I know that sounds weird because I'm here recording this. You're watching this later, but I, I just love sharing this stuff with you. I'm so glad we could give you a, a true sort of European experience this month. And uh, we hope to see you next month for more cheese and pairings and stories. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. Ciao, ciao.